Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. <laughs> I'm Natasha, I'm an artist and illustrator from the UK, and among other things, I love using watercolour in my artwork. So, my recent video, the 25 favourite watercolours ever video, seemed to be very popular, and several of you asked whether I would do like a runners up video. So the colours that almost made the cut, but not quite. Um, it was really, really hard trying to choose 25. Now 25 watercolours sounds like quite a lot. And in fact, is quite a lot. But I have so many colours that I've collected that I absolutely love. It was actually really hard for me to narrow it down to my 25 favourites. And there were several that could have made it into the top 25. So, um, by the way, I will link to this video in the description below. So if you haven't seen it yet and would like to, um, this is the final swatch sheet. But um, yeah, if you wanna go and watch that, please do. But today we are going to look at the 10 colours that almost made the cut, but not quite. And to be honest with you, they probably could have been in the top 25 because I love all of these colours too. So I'm just gonna do some swatching of 10 more colours um, because you asked for it basically. <laughs> Several people were really interested in seeing this and um, yeah, I'm going to show you some more lovely colours. So I think without any more chat, we will just get on. Um, I think the first one is in my main watercolour palette. So I'm gonna pop that there. So before I swatch, what I'm going to do is just pre-wet this paint. This is a good idea if you're working from um, dry pans of paint. Um, just pre-wet them and then you'll find they work much better. Um, so it gives them time to reactivate before you actually paint with them. So the first one, Daniel Smith Buff Titanium. Let's see if we can fit this palette in on the desk here. I'm just going to move some things out of the way. Some of these colours that I'm going to be swatching today are in my main palette and others are elsewhere. <laughs> they might be new colours. Some of them are new colours that aren't actually in a palette yet. I love the Buff Titanium because it's a gorgeous natural colour, a really good neutral colour and it's also a good mixing colour. Now we're not going to do any colour mixing today because I'm going to save that for another video in this watercolour series. So we can look forward to that one. Instead, I'm just going to swatch the buff titanium so you can see how it looks. Now, lots of brands obviously do buff titanium. It's a pretty standard colour. And I'm sure there are other really good ones out there. But the Daniel Smith one is the one I know. Okay, so the next one is Schmincke Horadam Shire Yellow. I need to go and get this one because it's actually a little tube paint. This is one of the Schmincke Horadam Super Granulation paints. And even though it looks like a kind of dusky yellow when it's wet, when you apply it to the paper and it starts to dry, you'll see that it separates and just looks so interesting. So initially I was most attracted to the Shire Grey and the Shire Blue, both of which feature in my top 25 colours. I like the Shire Olive and the Shire Yellow, but I wasn't as in love with them as the other two. And the Shire Green I like, but I kind of feel like it's quite bright. It isn't necessarily what I would use in my work. Um, I'm not as attracted to bright colours. I tend to go for more muted, moody colours, um, natural colours, and then occasionally I'll add a bright colour or a pastel colour. And I love to do that, but yeah, bright greens aren't something I would generally use in my work. 
but um, I have an appreciation for pretty much all colours. Anyway, this one, the Shire Yellow, I've just grown to appreciate this so much and I think it's just the most beautiful yellow. It's like I don't tend to use that many yellows in my work either. But um, you'll see how this one dries and separates. I'm just gonna add a little like highlight, just lift a little bit off there. It's such an interesting color and that beautiful texture. So this could definitely be one that um, ends up in the top 25. It's a very close run thing. <laughs> okay, the next one is another Schmincke Horridam super granulation color. This is the Forest Olive. So I have another one of these sets. Um, so it looks like this, you get five paints in the set. I'm sure a lot of you know about them, but just in case you don't, they're great little sets to have. Um, I find them very inspiring. They do nine different sets and I have three of them. Um, so yeah, I have the forest set as well. So from the forest set, my absolute favorite is the forest blue, um, but I love the forest olive as well. So you can already see how interesting that shy yellow is looking. I'm really excited to use it more in my work, actually. As, as I say, it was quite a recent purchase, so I've only used it a little bit so far. So the Forest Olive is a gorgeous, moody kind of green. By the way, I'm gonna tell you what brush I'm using because every time I use these brushes, I try to mention it at some point in the video, but so many people ask me what they are. Um, they're the Betty Hayways watercolor brushes. This is a size seven, and I bought mine from the Chelsea Paper Company in the UK. Now, I don't know where else you can get them, if you do a quick Google, you may be able to find somewhere else that stocks them. Um, but they're one of the best watercolour brushes I've ever used. They hold a lot of pigment, a lot of water, um, but they have a really fine point as well. So they're great for details, even the larger brushes. So as I say, this is a size 7. I most often use the size 7 or the size 5. But I do have a larger one as well. So for the next one, I've brought in my second greens palette. We're going to be looking at all of these different palettes in depth during this series. But for today, I'm just going to be swatching. <laughs> in fact, I'm going to be swatching a couple from this. But the next one, is the Daniel Smith Cascade Green. Now this may come as some surprise to those of you who remember when I featured this in an art haul a few months ago, probably sometime around, I don't know, the middle of last year, maybe early autumn, I can't remember. It was several months ago. Anyway, when I swatched the Cascade Green for the first time, <laughs> I really didn't like it very much. It was one of the few colors that I had bought and looked at and just thought, I don't think I'm going to use this. I can't imagine how I'm going to use this in my work. So the strange thing is, I now love this colour and it turns out I was just swatching it wrong because when I use it now, I use it in much more of a wash and I'm actually going to show you something that I worked on just the other day with the Cascade Green. I'm going to go and get that for you because I think it would be interesting for you to see. So this tree is painted entirely in Cascade Green. I just used one colour for this and if I hold it closer to the camera, I hope you can see just how many beautiful colours there appear to be in those branches. So when I use Cascade Green in a much more diluted way, I water it down much more. I absolutely love it. I love this variation. I love how here 
on the trunk, it's much darker. So it's applied slightly more heavily there. And then as I feathered out the branches, um, you end up with these gorgeous aqua greens and blues, and it is just stunning. It has seriously become one of my favorite colors. And that's not something I thought I would say when I swatched it for the first time. So I'm gonna do a little pebble swatch here now so you can have a really good look at it. It always surprises me how sometimes your opinion of a color can completely change. So just remember to never write anything off if initially you don't like it, you may find <laughs> that just using it in a different way or combining it perhaps with other colors that you absolutely end up loving it. I can't believe how much I love this color now. <laughs> so all the people who told me to um, try this color and said, I think you'll really like it. You are actually right. Um, and I completely take back what I said about it in that video because I don't think I was terribly complimentary about it. I mean, I wasn't awful. I think I, <laughs> I think I said it reminded me of like a, I don't know, is it like a tie dye shirt from the 1990s or something like that? but it totally doesn't now. I was just using it wrong. So I'm trying to learn as I do my swatches now to add much more water to them. I used to swatch very heavily and as I'm using watercolor more, I'm learning that the beauty in it is when you allow the pigment to move around, add more water and it's more of a wash. It um, really allows it to shine. Look at that, that is an absolutely beautiful colour. I'm so sorry, Cascade Green, that I doubted you. Somebody said the other day um, that they wished I didn't overwork the watercolour. I can see how they would think that I do because I'm very fussy about getting the edges of these pebbles looking really crisp and almost perfect. Not really perfect, but you know what I mean. Um, I'm trying not to overwork the watercolour too much. I'm just trying to make things look a little bit neater because what I do with these um, swatches at the end is I photograph them and then offer them as a high res download to my patrons on Patreon. So I like them to look nice. So that's all I'm trying to do really. So um, those four colours, I love them together. That's actually a fantastic mini palette, um, which I didn't expect actually, <laughs> but they look really good together. Okay, the next one is going to be a green that I also really love. Haven't used that much in my work yet, but it's in another one of my palettes, um, one of my little themed palettes. So I'll go and get that because it's the Windsor & Newton professional aqua green. I decided to put the Winsor & Newton aqua green in my night palette. So this is my little night landscape palette. Um, I have some metallics in there. These are handmade watercolors, um, but the rest are all just big brands. But we'll look at that in more detail in another video. So the aqua green is this one here. It's a really stunning colour, as you'll see. Just try to reactivate that a bit. It's a super strong colour and it's stunning. And now I'm thinking, why don't I use it more? I mean, it is one of my favourite colours. I loved it from the moment I first swatched it. And I don't really understand why I don't use it more. But um, when I get back into painting night landscapes with this little palette, it's going to be such a good one. Look at 
that, what a striking colour. I'm really loving these together. That's why I love doing exercises like this because it helps me to look at my colours in a new way and sometimes you come up with unexpected combinations. I wouldn't have thought to put these five colours together but I think they look gorgeous. <laughs> so there we go. So the next one is from this Greens palette as well and it is the Royal Talons Rembrandt Dusk Green. So the Dusk Pink and the Dusk Yellow featured in my top 25 and this one could easily have been in there too. I think the only reason I didn't include it was because I had so many of these kind of dark, muted and moody greens <laughs> that I thought I can't possibly put another one in there as well. And um, you'll see why I love it so much. So it's a really granulating paint and it can look almost black if you apply it with less water. When you add the water, it separates. So you see the black pigment and the green pigment. That's just a really interesting color again. Look at that, it's just such an interesting color. When these are dry, by the way, I'm going to hold them up closely at the end so you can really see them properly because I know that I'm swatching from a bit of a distance. Okay, so the next one I think is also in my night palette. It is. It's the Schmink Horadam Deep Sea Black. So this is another one of their super granulation colours. And so it's obviously from the Deep Sea collection. There are five different colours and I have the deep sea black. So I thought it was just an interesting black, <laughs> basically. A black with a bit more going on than your average black. I already love it and it hasn't even really started separating yet. <laughs> I just feel like watercolours make me so happy. And those of you who use them, do you know what I mean when I say that? There's something so pleasurable about using watercolours. I mean, I use gouache paint, both acrylic gouache and traditional gouache. I use um, acrylics um, when I'm working on canvas. I love all of these paints for different reasons, but there's just something about watercolours that's just like so incredibly fun. They're kind of a little bit unpredictable. And just the way you can create so many different effects with them, depending on how much water you add and the paper you use as well. By the way, I'm swatching on a cold pressed watercolour paper. So this is, I think, the Bockingford paper. So it's quite an inexpensive one. Um, let's just move that up there. I tend to use, most of the time these days, 100% cotton paper. But when I'm doing the swatching, I just go for something that's a little less expensive, but still good. And I really like the Bockingford paper. I think if you're on a bit of a budget and you want a good watercolour paper, go for that. It's the one I've used for many years, so I speak from experience. <laughs> but yeah, I love this one. The surface is textured, but not too rough. I think it's called the knot surface, if you want to get it. And I think this is the 200 pound weight paper. So it's fairly thick. So you can see that's already separating into the blue and black pigments. Gosh, the Royal Talons um, dust green 
is looking incredible. That one granulates so much. Okay, I think we're going back to the main palette now. So the next three colours are actually all in my main palette. So the first one I'm going to swatch is the Daniel Smith Mayan Dark Blue. This is the most gorgeous dark inky blue. And for a while it wasn't in my main palette because I was running a light fast test on it. Because I had heard, I'm just going to move that over here because there's not very much space on the desk at the moment. Um, yeah, I was running a light fast test because I'd heard that um, this one had fading issues, despite Daniel Smith saying it is light fast. Um, I can only tell you that in the way I swatched it, which was without diluting it too much, um, I didn't notice any fading issues whatsoever during my tests and it was on the windowsill for, oh my goodness, I can't remember exactly how long now, but there was absolutely no change. Whereas there were changes in some of the other paints that I was testing, because um, light fastness is very, very important to me. Um, I sell my original work, so the paints have to be light fast if people are gonna hang them on their wall. So the other paints that aren't light fast are just for sketchbook work or for work that's going to be scanned and reproduced digitally, for example. Um, but because I didn't experience any fading with the Daniel Smith Mine Dark Blue, I decided to put it in my main palette. And it's such a beautiful blue. I love it. I just want to add a little more here because I want you to see how dark it can be. It's such a gorgeous colour. The next one is another Daniel Smith colour. It's the Jane's Grey. And this is like an alternative, in my mind, to Payne's Grey. So it's slightly more violet. It has a definite hint of Payne's Grey about it. I love how these colours are looking together. I actually feel like I could make a palette with these colours in it. <laughs> Shall I make a runners up palette? Put them all in the palette. I'm actually very excited to tell you that the next video coming up is an art haul. I said there won't be many art hauls this year and there definitely aren't going to be anywhere near as many and they won't be as large as some of the art hauls last year. But whenever I have affiliate credit from Jackson's, I buy myself a few little paints here and there and I've promised myself that if I pay for them with the affiliate credit I can treat myself to more watercolours. So what I have done is I've bought some individual pans of the Schmincke Horadam super granulating colours, colours I haven't tried before and they're going to be in an art hall with some other interesting paints and different things. I'm quite excited about this art hall. The only thing um, I did do, which was a bit naughty, was I got tempted by something on Colt Pens. And so I placed a Colt Pens order that ended up <laughs> being um, an order that contained, I think, five different products. 
think it was five different products. Um, and I am trying not to spend as much, well, I'm not spending as much money, that's a fact, on art supplies this year. But I went there for one thing and I ended up with five things in my cart. And I'm very excited to share them with you actually because they are lovely. Um, so yeah, I have an art haul coming up in maybe a week and a half, something like that. And I'm gonna share some new colors with you, which I am so excited to swatch and try for the first time. In case you can see that the Jane's Grey, I'm just gonna lift a little bit there. It's such a lovely color. That's so beautiful. Looks lovely with these two as well. It's kind of not dissimilar to the deep sea black in some ways, but we can see that this is really separating the colours in that one. So we're on to the last colour, and this is the Roman Schmall Misty Morning. I love my Roman Schmall paints. I don't have that many. But the ones I have, I've been so impressed with the quality and they're such interesting paints. I have, I'm going to show you actually this swatch sheet from the last video. So on here I have, let's get a brush to point. I have the Roman Schmall Vivianite, very interesting greeny blue colour. Um, the other one I featured was the Roman Schmall Lazurite, gorgeous colour for a kind of grey blue sky. And I have the Shadow Violet on here too. I think that's all. They're the only three Roman Schmalls on there, I think so. But um, yeah, those three colours have become some of my favourite colours. And I think it's only right that we add Misty Morning to the 10 that didn't quite make it. So this is a gorgeous colour because the pigments separate so much. Just to make sure you add quite a bit of water to it to see it fully. But they're just such pretty colours, the Roman Schmall colours. And I love the formulation of the paint. They only sell them in full pans at the moment. So they do take up quite a bit of space in your palette. But they're worth it. <laughs> so you can already see that's doing some very interesting stuff. So I'm going to leave those to dry and then I'll come back and I'll hold them up to the camera for you and um, you can have a really good close look at them. Okay, if you've made it this far through the video, um, what could we get you to say today? I think that you should leave a comment telling me your one favourite watercolour ever. So I want you to pick one colour that you love above all others, or if you don't love it above all others, one of your absolute favourites that you couldn't be without. Leave that as a comment for me and let me know that you have stayed this far into the video. Um, also let me know, actually, while you're doing that, which one of these colours is actually your favourite from this selection of 10. Okay, I'll be back in a bit when these are dry and we'll have another look at them.